Hi, I'm Salvation and in this video I want to give you my first impressions on the game Victor of Ran. The game was released in 2015 by Heimimont Games, which are best known for the Tropico series. Let's see if they did well with their first action RPG. I played 14 hours of it so far, so I guess that is a very decent time for a first impression. Victor of Rain is an isometric action RPG with a pretty classic vampire hunter setting and focuses on the action combat that allows jumping and dodge rolls. The graphical presentation is nothing out of the ordinary. It's not ugly, but it won't blow you away. I could say the same about the soundtrack and the story. Pretty okay, but nothing all too special. The story is borderline cringe-worthy. It's told by pretty neat animated sequences and dialogue by Victor and the voice in his head. While I liked the voice acting in the cutscenes, the narration during the game really isn't my cup of tea with the cheap jokes and sarcastic comments about the story. The game also has a multiplayer for up to four players. I played together with a buddy most of the time and it seemed to work well without disconnects or other problems. You start out in a tutorial-like area, making your way to the main hub while learning how to use different abilities and moves, including wall jumps, dodge rolls and weapon abilities. Once you arrive at the castle you can select a costume, which is one of the only two types of real equipment. There are no separate slots for boots, helmet, chest and gloves, you just get a whole outfit. These outfits change the way you generate overdrive, which is a resource you need to use demon powers. The castle acts as a hub for the rest of the game. Here you find merchants to trade with, your chest, NPCs that give quests and tell the story, your stash and the map from which you teleport into other areas. Victor Ren also has a pretty new take on the whole active skill idea, as skills are bound to a type of weapon. Each weapon gives you three skills, a basic attack that has no or little cooldown and two special attacks with longer cooldowns. For melee weapons you get swords, skites, hammers and rapiers. As ranged weapons you get shotguns, lightning guns, hand mortars and tomes. You can equip two weapons at a time and switch between them during combat. The weapons you find can also have different rarity, providing up to three stats like knockback, attack speed, damage, crit chance or cooldown reduction. Then there are also legendary weapons with special effects. Legendary weapons will also grow with your character and get higher damage when you level up. Apart from these weapons, which all offer a different playstyle, you also get about two dozen of demon powers, of which you can equip two at a time. These powers include teleports, defensive powers, damage boosts, big AoE attacks and good single target damage attacks, and you need overdrive to use them. To complement these customization options you also get two consumable items, which can be healing potions or other defense or offense boosting potions, but also a variety of bombs. The last part of character customization is the destiny card system, that acts a bit like the passive tree in Path of Exile. You can equip up to five of these cards and they can provide passive bonuses to different stats like move speed, health or crit chance. But there are also cards that provide you with triggered effects, like explosions when you get hit, ice novas on crit, or a health recovery from different triggers. Overall the character customization is pretty well done. Of course it hasn't the depths as Path of Exile or Grim Dawn, but with all the little parts you can shape Victor to fit the playstyle you like pretty well. During the game you fight through different areas with style set like mines, wilderness or a steampunkish city. The variety of enemies is pretty good and the combat feels fluid and satisfying, with enough things to do and options to switch up your playstyle via weapons or demon power. There are boss fights at the end of most areas and most of them feel pretty epic and satisfying to beat. Each area also has different challenges, like killing monsters in a specific way, using no potions or activating some of the hexes, and you can choose to try and complete them for extra loot, XP and gold. The hexes are modifiers that you can opt to activate to make the game harder and gain more XP and loot for it. There are five different hexes and if you wish so you can activate them all at once. 
you can always switch them off again if you find it too hard, as it can be toggled each time you enter an area. There is also a hardcore difficulty which has all 5 curses permanently on you. After you have beaten the story, you can go and farm areas for loot and XP, and you are free to choose which area you like to farm, as they will all scale to your level and provide useful loot and XP. You will also unlock the Elite Challenges, which are additional 5 challenges for each area that will also provide loot and other bonuses if completed. There is also an endgame dungeon that was added with a free DLC, that changes every day and offers new challenges to complete. There are also bounties and treasure hunts, which are special quests for specific loot that you unlock via codes that you will randomly drop throughout the game. These codes can also be shared between players and you will often find the global chat of the multiplayer lobby filled with those codes. Another thing you might want to engage with later in the game is the crafting system. You can increase properties on your weapons or even add a specific role to a weapon as well as upgrade your demon powers and destiny cards. Overall, I am impressed with the endgame options this game offers. For this kind of mostly single player RPG, I normally expect that there is little reason to keep playing after beating the story, but Victor Ren has some pretty neat things in store to keep you playing. So, let's come to a conclusion here. In my opinion, Victor Ren is a really good action RPG. Despite the graphics, soundtrack and story, the gameplay is what matters and in my opinion the game really drives it home with satisfying combat and a nice variety of customization options. If you are looking for a game to play while you are burned out on grinding maps in PoE, Victor Run can deliver for at least 15 hours and if you find that you like the combat as much as I do, for lots longer than that. The current price on Steam is 19.99 euros, but the game was included in many sales in the past and you can get the key from other shops for as low as 1 euro. At this price point it's almost free to play and for the fun it delivers it's an outright bargain. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please feel free to like and subscribe. I am Salvation, see you in my next video. Now he wanders the world alone, never staying in one place for long, lest his curse catches up with him.